Caddis Maximus here, this time with a teardown and discussion of this Hubble a loop cast aluminum body, glass lens, compact refractor wall pack. These are what have been traditionally the commercial lights on the outside of buildings. This happens to be a premium Hubble brand. The previous video to this, I did a review of one of those really bright 20,000 lumen uh, high bay LED lights. And those are the lights that are now finally starting to replace the traditional high intensity discharge light. This just happens to be a building e building exterior light and is only rated at 100 watts. It's one thing that pe maybe people may not have known is that halide lights can be made in just about any size capacity, just as LEDs, and they can actually currently have the win on absolute power. You, I have not seen anywhere where there are 1,000 watt or 2,000 watt LED bay lights. LEDs really are, they're getting, you know, as efficient or more efficient than these halide lights. Um, and often manufacturers try to rate uprate them, which, you know, they're pushing it a bit. They also try to advertise the actual LED element lifetime rather than the package or the power supply lifetime. That's what I thought was interesting about that bay light, the, the Apollo, was that they back it up with the five year warranty. So that's you know, saying that they're putting in a pretty good power supply. When it comes to HIDs, the magnetic, the switching ones have the same, you know, reliability concerns as LED lights. So, but the magnetic transformer based ones, my goodness, those things are super duper reliable. And really they fail when people don't change the bulbs when they're supposed to. On a 100 watt like this, you may get an average of 12,000 hours of life. That would be three years of it being on only at night. And if you just replace the bulb, uh, then the power supplies and ballast will last virtually forever. They can last for decades. So when you start leaving a bulb in there for too long and then it starts uh, having to turn on and off repeatedly, uh, overworking primarily the igniter, uh, that causes the ballast to fail. But if you replace the bulbs, then you just won't have an issue. So even though this is 100 watt, it's actually a fairly sizable unit. We got some little things here. And let's get this out of its bag. The LEDs are pretty price competitive. Uh, a premium Hubble unit like this, if you were just to pay Granger or just full on retail prices, these things with the glass lens were like $250 or something. They were actually surprisingly expensive. So the LEDs are really much more price competitive. Although I think that if you got a Hubble LED, it would probably be around the same price as one of these. But these Hubbles were standard, so that's kind of the video. It's just a teardown of the common commercial one that's been on so many buildings. This is a nice white light instead of the high pressure sodium, which is the orange light on these. Like this unit would come pre wired 420 volt just to make it super simple. So we'll turn it on and uh, see how it looks. And then we'll tear into it. You'll do notice everything is high temperature. Actually, the ballast wires or the transformer wires are only. Uh, well, they are. They're decent. They're 105 degrees Celsius, but we can see on the green or the ground wire that they're actually using a super high temperature fiberglass insulation. When they say quad tap, that's like on the box, that's one big advantage of the switching supplies that are on uh, either modern switching supplies for halides or for LEDs is the fact that they can auto detect and dynamically take an input voltage of 100 through 275 volts. With the transformer based ones, there actually has to be physically separate windings. And so this will have windings for say 100, 120, uh, 220, and 240, or something along those lines. And there are companies that sell LED replacements because these wall packs, like these Hubbles, are basically will last forever with their die cast aluminum and glass lens. And you just replace the internals with an LED. And these are even kind of cool. They have. Uh, provisions here so they can actually have a protective cage put over it if you're in a particularly rough environment. Just a quick note, since this was a brand new unit, if you find them used, you're usually pretty safe, but you always want to open the cover. Just make sure there isn't any water inside. On new units, they protect the bulb by leaving the box on the bulb. So if you were to have wired this up and not checked, uh, you would have definitely had an issue. And then there's a close-up of our little 100 watt. This would be a horizontal burn bulb. It's one of the caveats of the HID bulbs is they have they take time to warm up. They can't be turned on and off rapidly. If you turn them off, they have to stay off 
for 10 or 15 minutes with a little metal salts to uh, re-solidify. And many times the bulbs are designed to either be burned universally, which is either vertically or horizontally, or such as this wall mount unit, it's designed to be installed in a horizontal position. And this would be a horizontal burn bulb. And it just means that you would experience a reduced lifetime if you installed it into a different orientation than the bulb was intended for. Such a, this 100 watt bulb is about the 8,000 lumens or so. And uh, it's about the same size as a normal screw-in incandescent bulb. These smaller HIDs actually use that same Edison standard socket, but you never want to screw one of these into one uh, standard household socket. I've always thought what lighting would have been like if those were the kind of bulbs that people's houses actually came with. Got it all connected. I figured if I'm going to do a teardown video, at least you got to get a nice up-close look of a uh, one of these starting up. These are known as a pulse start. It has a little circuit known as an igniter. It does a little high voltage jump between the two contacts inside the bulb to get an initial arc going. That's why they kind of flash and are dim when they start is because it's just a basic arc. And then there are actually little bits of metal inside the bulb. As that arc starts to melt the metal, it vaporizes it. That vapor gets into the little plasma beam, the arc, and increases its conductivity, allowing more energy to flow, as well as actually emitting those particles emit light themselves. And that's why it slowly gets brighter as all those salts fully melt and emulsify to create the final beam. After the initial high voltage spark, that turns off, and then these types of bulbs will run in, say, the 200, 250 volt range. One aspect of them, I'll get into the table, is you can actually measure the lifetime. When you install a new bulb, after it's warmed up for, say, 10, 15 minutes, you just measure the voltage across the terminals. And then when you have a periodically you're doing checks, you can, say, in a year, measure the voltage and see how much it's increased. That baseline tends to be kind of difficult, but many places online for higher power bulbs mention somewhere around 250 volts, 255 volts are normal operating. And once they start getting around 275, 280 volts, that's as the salts and everything have broken down, the resistance is, in, is increasing, the voltage is increasing until it gets to a point where it can't uh, sustain the beam anymore and then it shuts down. That's what causes the flickering issue. Anyway, enough babbling here. And it's really fast and then all the rest of the warming up of the bulb is simply those salts melting down. There's also, of course, the light hum that you get from the auto transformers that are in these, but it's always kind of a comforting sound. We'll be back in just a second for full brightness. You can already see how the background is getting darker and darker as the contrast ratio is changing. So we'll be back in a minute here. See that all of a sudden just that's when it started hitting the temperature where a bunch of salts just started to vaporize and then that's just a, a big jump. As soon as they vaporize a whole lot, the resistance drops and a whole lot more current can start going through the bulb. And uh, then that's where a lot of the brightness comes from. And that's also the reason that it kind of you'll have flashes of orange and different things as the bulb is heating up. Here we are at full brightness. As you can see, the background is just in almost invisible or not visible now because it's just a mere 8,000 lumens. And unfortunately, it's hard for me to really do a comparison of relative light output. If I put my hand in front of it and then pull it away, the automatic contrast or, or exposure in the camera mode is not something I can control currently. But these are pretty bright. One thing about these enclosures is even though everything's rated for the heat, man, they just get super duper hot. And in the summertime, these enclosures are probably 200, 150 degrees, 200. They are really blazing hot. It's probably the biggest criticism in, of them. And that's why they say they are not rated indoor rated at all. It's just because of how hot the enclosure gets. Part of the reason they make them out of cast aluminum is just to give them a little bit more heat sinking capability. Since you can just use more normal heat sinks with the power supplies that drive LEDs, that's why those lights can have, this isn't just a form factor of the LEDs, it's just that the switching power supplies can also be built to have uh, a wide variety of form factors. So you don't still need these huge cases. You can just have, 
you know, like a work light, it can just be a panel where the power supply has heat sinks on the back and then you just have LED elements on the front. And we're back at the workbench. Another thing to note, I guess I'll mention that in a minute. The one aspect also about these halide lights is the fact that they are a point source or theoretically a point source with a whole bunch of output. Also, a lot of LED manufacturers seem to be advertising about how uh, you can only get halides in this or that color, which doesn't make any sense. You can go and find HID headlights all the way up through hot pink and purple. We're talking 12K, 15K, 20K uh, colored lights. Because nowadays they figure out exactly the combination of metals to put into them. So as far as this Hubble is concerned, I'm going to keep this case because I'm going to do some like LED Halloween and Christmas lights inside it. And I think it will look neat with this refractor. refractor. But as far as talking about it, they do have one thing. And keep in mind, this is a premium Hubble, commercial grade, electrical contractors, not just in the United States, but all over the, the world. Uh, these are specified because they are like the units you can bank on, you can rely on, you can sell them to the business owner saying you don't even have to change the bulb for every couple, three years kind of thing. Um, is it's a little disappointing because they have, you know, this fixture is designed for years of trouble-free operation, but there's some issues with that. Primarily with the ceiling. I was noticing why on earth did the screws have like little o-rings under them? You know over expansion and contraction those are eventually water will want to seep past You can't screw them down very tight because of course you have little o-rings and they get squished And that's because the sealing mechanism or the way the seal is designed and these covers do just tilt off like that Just goes around the perimeter instead of making a jog around the screw holes and that's actually a deficiency. They should have had it made a jog. That way you don't have to worry about independently sealing the screws uh, to maintain a seal inside the unit. And interestingly enough, the glass cover we can see, it just is using silicone uh, glue, silicone sealant, and then just some tabs on the corner to hold it in when they glued it, but just good old silicone. And really why I'm most after is this glass refractor, because this has a really interesting casting and pattern on it. This is where you always have to use gloves or a rag or something when you're touching these bulbs. And the reason is, is oils from your fingerprints. And it isn't like dry hands, really the fingerprint is going to be so bad. But if you have a little bit sweaty hands, a little bit of grease, dirt, grime, what that does is the light and all the heat that's coming out of the bulb uh, will start reflecting off of whatever that fingerprint is or smudge. That will start heating up a whole lot more than the rest of the glass causing a localized superheated area it will cause an uneven expansion of the glass and can cause the outer bulb to shatter here's our bulb as long as your hands aren't too dirty it's okay to hold it by the base but of course we have a vacuum chamber there's a uv coating on the outside of this because of course lots of different frequencies of ultraviolet are coming out of these bulbs because it is a plasma beam and then the inner bulb is just a piece of fused quartz uh, that contains the halides and the little electrodes and I'm not exactly sure it's kind of hard At least for me to understand what they're talking about when they mention like this little piece of metal in there or this little thing odd little Kind of disc it looks like it's a has a moisture absorber or something in it I'm not exactly sure what those additional components are for but They always kind of make these bulbs look neat and LEDs are amazing now, but when the these halides came out um, they were replacing incandescent bulbs, bulbs that had a tenth the efficiency. You had 8,000 lumens out of this bulb or an incandescent 100-watt bulb that put out 800 lumens, maybe 1,000 if it was a really good one, maybe a halogen or something. So as cool and revolutionary as LEDs are now, they are nowhere near the difference that was made when the high the HID bulbs were replacing incandescents. I mean, it was just massive, massive performance differences. We can just directly replace the same wattage of, of incandescent with something that's going to be just in so much brighter. Save you a ton of money on utility bills. I mean, it's taken well over half a century uh, or even longer than that, 75 years to, uh, for technology to finally make something that is a significant upgrade from what these were. And the fact that you could bank on the 10,000 hours plus lifetime. These were truly revolutionary. Oh, look, it must be October. We got some little uh, Halloween things. 
I guess we're starting to head into the uh, holiday season. Let's get this reflector out of here. Another advantage to those high intensity bulbs is there is no limit. There are tiny ones. I was trying to dig up a little Knight Rider that was a 10 watt HID bicycle lamp. It was the brightest in the world until it was replaced by LEDs. It was really pretty impressive. We got our little sheet metal aluminum reflector. And then there's our ballast and our igniter and our capacitor. I always forget to mention the capacitors that you have with these. As well as the auto transformer. What's really unfortunate getting into this is to see how Hubble has really kind of gone downhill. And really a brand like Philips Advance is now one of the last of the really premium uh, brands. There's a few others, but uh, it's amazing how over time a company like Hubble, which was top of the line just really isn't anymore i mean these components are decent it is open so you can replace the capacitor in the igniter uh but just you know how much money they're really charging for this whole setup just seems to be uh, a bit much and here we are we can see one of the reasons they can be electrically a lot more reliable is simply because this is what you have you have igniter which is all in a potted circuit here with you know epoxy filled can as well as a capacitor. I always <laughs> I know what the igniter does because it's what provides the high voltage initial spike to spark the lamp. That's what a pulse start metal halide is. Oftentimes these setups can be compatible with both high pressure sodium and metal halide, but it's surprising they have a little bit different startup characteristics. And of course, the capacitor. And then usually there's some kind of thermal uh, protection in the transformer. I can say in this Hubble unit, the transformer isn't you know, the greatest. It has been varnished, but only lightly. We have a whole bunch of wires, but they're all marked. So if we want to do the different voltages, such as 277 volts, and there's the different voltages that would support 120, 208, 240, and 277. And so that's the only thing, is they just have little uh, boots over the unused wires, and you just strip those off and then put a wire nut or something on the this newly disused wire and hook it up to whatever voltage you need it. And uh, generally what I mean uh, when I mention Phillips is, you know, these types of ballasts can be repaired. But if you replace the bulb, uh, many times these things will just last decades. And really a much more premium one might be something like this. I was talking about that double-ended metal halide. And this is the ballast. This is a American-made Phillips Advance ballast. Surprisingly enough, these actually specifically say for double-ended, not for uh, single-ended, which would be the type of bulb this ballot, the Hubble ballast uses. But we can see it's an all-integrated unit, thermally protected. The whole thing is potted, so it's just a nice, sealed, very long-lasting. These Philips Advance are known as being some of the best ballasts, as well as any of their power supplies for LEDs or anything else. These are really nice commercial-grade units. And it's just surprising to see that uh, the Hubble is so far away from uh, Phillips now. It's really kind of surprising. Anyway, that was a long video uh, diving into one of these uh, wall lamps. But, you know, somebody may kind of be curious and come across it and, and think, oh, well, that's what's inside and a whole bunch of uh, too much information otherwise. And for me, this is just what I like to do. I like to take apart this kind of stuff and just see what's inside and, you know, see how good it really is and... All that, and now I have this little 8,000 lumen, 100 watt metal halide setup that I can use for some kind of lighting project in a future shop or something. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing, even my weird discussion videos like this. Until next time, Catus Maximus out.